right? And so it's this, it's this, it's this area where commodification, what we say, price above all else at the expense of all else, has led to falsely depressed prices of meat that are coming from animals that are living in sedentary environments and who are sick themselves, feeding a population of now sedentary and sickening people. Um, and the only variable that folks seem most concerned with at, at large, as far as the people behind the scenes delivering this meat to you, is how cheap can we get it, right? And I think we're of the mindset, all of the people here, of it's not just about how cheap I can get it. It's about what value does it bring? What is the expense on the land? What is the expense on animal welfare? What are the, what's the true cost of this food? And what is the value that it brings to me and my family and the people that I feed with it? What's the nourishing properties? What are the, what, what sort of energy and, and, and system am I contributing to? Is it something I'm proud of or is it something that I'm not proud of? And we can't get to that point. We can't have that sort of awakening if we don't share these realities with consumers. Um, and if we don't support farmers and ranchers to actually justify the effort to make better food, food that's considerate across stakeholders, considerate of the planet, considerate of animals, considerate of people and communities, considerate of consumers. And so that's where force of nature comes in, right? We are a mark, we are a brand that is facilitating the creation of this regenerative market at a massive scale across proteins, across channels, also that consumers can have the protein that they're looking for through the, you know, whether it's a store or online, however they want to get it through a convenient means for them. And then simultaneously creating content um, that creates that awareness. So they have the why, the why beyond just price, right? Um, and connecting them for the first time ever, not only the issues in their food and the sourcing of their food, but to the actual farms and ranches where their food comes from, right? And, um, you know, so, so, several folks here have actually been out to White Oak Pastures that um, uh, Taylor mentioned out in Georgia. They're an operation that you can buy directly from and, and you should if you can. Um, a lot of places across the country can't. We still work with and source them. On the complete opposite coast, I know Anthony in the past, you sourced from um, uh, Lauren over at Stemple Creek, right? Another similar operation. Um, and you start to multiply these out where on their own, they do not have the scale and force and cannot generate the momentum to reach all the consumers and drive the sort of change that we're talking about. But force of nature can support all of them in their own context and aggregate the supply of food to really then connect the consumer, connect the rancher, and now we're like humming. Now we've built this like kick-ass machine that's accelerating momentum to actually change the way agriculture is practiced. And for the first time ever, give consumers a chance to actually elect a better food system, which kind of leads us to today, right? And I know that we were gonna do a bison harvest and we're rescheduling that for the spring and hopefully everybody can, can come for that. And you know, part of that was intended to be Look how beautiful this animal is. We should respect and admire and appreciate that. And Sammy, you got to, you got, you've been through that and seen that experience too. And it's emotional and it should be emotional. When you see something whose life is sacrificed to feed you, there's a connection there that you don't get um, at the grocery store unless we're able to succeed in telling this story in a better way and bringing people into the conversation in a more intimate way. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, actually use an axis deer today and break it down and, and, and get some of that because you know that axis deer was it may not have been an animal that was raised in our herd of bison but it was an animal that as Taylor said is raised in the context of this ranch and respected and honored just the same it's so there's some nuance to that because it is an invasive species so we, we can talk about that throughout the day but nonetheless like this is an animal that that was living and thriving just a few um, you know, hours ago or day, a, a couple days ago, and, and now, of course, it's going gonna, it's gonna to become our food. So we'll go through that journey together. Um, and then we'll talk about, similarly, what is regenerative agriculture? What are things that can be done on the land? We'll go through stations and talk about um, the actual, you know, principles of regenerative agriculture, um, and then give, our, give, give everybody time, a chance to either add to the conversation or ask questions or, you know, again, get intimate with the environment and with the food. And then, of course, this evening, um, some of us will be staying back and actually trying to, again, re recreate the actual journey from living animal to plate um, as, we, as we do a little bit of a, a live harvest ourselves. So, uh, any questions before we get into the day about Rome or force of nature or what we're doing and how we're going to change the world together? Actually, I do have a question about force of nature. So, when you guys are talking about working with these other farms, are you... So you guys just sold your pigs, but you also, Force of Nature, provides ground pork. Are you then working with other farms to source 
the, the meat, assuming that they kind of align with the same philosophies that that is the standard of force of nature? Is that is that how force of nature works or everything that force of nature produces is currently from this branch? So, so Rome is a separate operation from force of nature. Mm -hmm. Katie and Taylor own Rome Ranch. Mm -hmm. um, I have some bison here, very small number in, in the herd. Um, Similarly, Katie and Taylor and I own Force of Nature, so separate mm -hmm. entities, right? But it's but I think you're you're getting the idea. Force of Nature works with and supports Rome Ranch. Force of Nature also works with and supports many, many, many other producers like this one across the country. Gotcha. Um, uh, and that is the sort of validation that Taylor's talking about. It, that's the way that we can aggregate and scale right. in a way that independently we couldn't. So now now we can combine forces yeah. um, and actually have a chance to go on and take on the the big bad industry players out there that have been, you know, raking in profits at the expense of literally everybody else. Um, so in the, in the example that, that I gave with the, the, this group out in um, California, you know, we, we visited them a few weeks ago. We're actually bringing them into our supply chain. They're not on there yet. It's called Stimple Creek. They sell direct to consumer. They sell into retail on the, east, on, on the west coast, excuse me. But he's like, I got this problem. I have all this, all this trim meat. I can't, I'm going to have to make my own ground meat. It's the hardest thing for me to move. That's part of the reason Force of Nature started doing mostly ground items, right? Because we know that's a challenge for producers. And so we said, hey, well, guess what? We'll, we'll buy up all that trim, we'll take your ground, we'll put it into our brick, and then we'll, similarly, we'll go and we'll highlight you and tell your story right. and create more awareness for what you're doing. That will benefit, the halo of that will benefit us, it will benefit you, it will benefit other good actors, and then we'll also be able to supply more of your great products to more consumers more consumers will be desiring it because the story will be able to have that awareness, so on yeah. and so forth. So you can see how that starts to, to, to cause dominance to tumble.